Hello everyone and welcome, welcome back to another episode of the unnamed BG News Sports Podcast. I thought we were going with lemonade. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's still the only uh, viable suggestion we have that's somewhat creative. That's like the code name. The code name. Yeah. Lemonade. Lemonade. Well, as Mike said, welcome back. This is episode number no. two. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome back. I guess we're going to play off that from now on. We'll yeah, add, right, Ryan. We'll add an additional welcome to every episode it is. So it's by the end like of the by the end of the year, it'll the entire podcast will just be us saying welcome. It's going to get crazy by like episode 50. <laughs> it's going to be welcome, welcome, half an hour welcome, of saying welcome. welcome. I don't think there's that many weeks in the year, my friend. Details. Welcome, 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 welcome. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Multiple breaths. It'll just be, it'll take up the entire YouTube description. <laughs> oh, man. But yes, welcome back. Yes, I guess um, there's no introduction like last week necessary. I am Ryan Sokoviak. I am Nathan Alconage. I'm Mike Nowak. And um, boy, what a weekend it was oh, baby. for BG Sports. Before we get into... Uh, Ryan, you sound so enthused. Mm. Just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like we're recording this podcast at 1017 at night. Oh, wait. Wait, it is. It's late. Don't ruin. Don't. Shh, nobody knows You're ruining the illusion, Nate. I'm oh, sorry. No, you're actually hearing this shot live through mm-hmm. a YouTube video. <laughs> Twilight Zone. But anyway, um, before we get into what I'm sure is on the forefront of everyone's minds, we will, in the football game, in case you didn't know, if you lived under a rock this weekend or something like that. What football um, game? <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll get to that. But um, first... Football was not the only BG sport in action this weekend. Um, several sport, well, several sports. By several sports, I mean cross country started its season this weekend. So I guess we'll uh, start with cross country. They um, both men's and women's cross country team hosted the Mel Brott Invitational here on the campus of Bowling Green State University. Um, both teams finished second in the event. The men only competed against two other teams: Toledo, who won both events, actually men and women's, and Madonna University. And the women also finished second behind Toledo, beating out Eastern Michigan, Ball State, and Madonna University as well. Um, The Falcons, wow, I just completely forgot what I was going to say there. I don't think they play this weekend. Um, That is, what was that? (laughs) (laughs) That was my stomach. You probably can't hear it, but my stomach. I can hear it, though. (laughs) Uh, the both cross country teams are off this weekend. Yes, they are off this weekend, and they are back in action next week at the Buffalo Stampede in Buffalo, New York. Nate, soccer. All right, over in women's soccer here. Let's see. Last Thursday, August thirtieth, the Falcons took on the Golden Gophers in Minnesota, and they struggled a little bit. The score was 7 nothing. Tough loss. Yes, that is a very tough loss. <laughs> it's one of the most interesting mascot names I've ever the heard. The Golden Gophers. The Golden Gophers. I, I know. I don't understand why golden would be necessary for gophers. It's not like the blue well, the blue jackets at first were a yellow or a blue bumblebee. But I, your a gopher just kind of is kind of golden, I guess. Golden brown, maybe. Unless you're just like... Add some majesty to the gopher. I guess. Stick it out in a crown and a scepter. It's just like, yeah. That's like uh, if What's LSU up? changed their name to the LSU Yellow Tigers or something like that. <laughs> I, that doesn't seem to add anything. They're adding emphasis to a very lame mascot. I guess, because I, I guess no one wants hey to man, be called. Don't just gophers. Gophers awesome in Caddyshack. I love that movie. Yeah, that's no. true. That's true. But I'm eh? all right. Don't <laughs> nobody worry about it. Okay. Anyways. Okay, so then on, what do we got here? On September 1st, the Falcons took on Western Kentucky University and once again struggled a little bit, falling 2-1. to one. Over to men's soccer, the Falcons took on Marshall here at home and battled to a draw. So it was, the final score was 0-0. No shootouts or anything. No, oh, man, that's a shame. Penalty kicks are always fun. Yeah. Not. <laughs> that was completely 100% sarcastic. I don't like penalty <laughs> kicks. It's well right. for, for regular season, I guess it's an okay no. way to decide a game. But when you get it in the World Cup gold medal match, then it's just kind of bogus, I think. Hmm. It's like if uh, the Stanley Cup final game seven was decided by a shootout. Yeah, that would suck. Yeah. 
So the men's soccer team heads to the CCU Invitational this upcoming weekend, which is the Coastal Carolina University Invitational in Wofford College. Oh, no, they're facing Wofford College. Sorry. So wait, where is it? Well, if it's the Coastal Carolina Invitational, I'm assuming it's at Coastal Carolina University, which, if I remember correctly, is somewhere in South Carolina. Right. It was like South Carolina? Oh, wait, there's like a whole thing that tells you where it is. Oh, okay. Not really. Oh. It does, no, it just says Coastal Carolina. Oh. Oh, wait, here we go. Conway, South Carolina. <laughs> I can't read things. As we said, folks, it's a little late in the evening. Um, Suck it up. Yeah. And Ryan's trying to <laughs> soothe you to sleep soothe with, you to sleep with my, voice. my monotone. Also, oh, he's getting yeah. his berry white on. <laughs> <laughs> also in action this weekend was the uh, volleyball team. They continued what has been so far a bit of a rough start to the season, dropping two of three games over the weekend, losing to Georgia Tech and Cleveland State. Georgia Tech match they lost in four sets, and Cleveland State they lost in straight sets. However, they did pick up their first win of the season against Indiana University in four sets. They continue preseason tournament play this weekend, taking on... Portland State, BYU, and Utah in the BYU Nike Invitational out in Provo, Utah. That'll be quite the uh, lengthy trip there out to the almost the West Coast mountain time zone. I've never understood the mountain time zone. Almost. I'm just going to throw that out there. But not quite as far as the football dream. It's dream? dream. Team the, the, traveled the, the to Florida team. this past weekend. See that transition? Did you see that? That was oh. a, a transition, but I think Nate's that Utah's good. a little further than Gainesville, Florida. I, sa- I said oh, a little farther. Okay. Jeez, yeah, I'm, Nate's, I, I, I'm, I'm respecting Nate's okay, transition wait. ability. That though. was a good transition yeah, ability, see? but however, I was not done. Oh. I said you were done. Oh. I was done with recaps. Oh. Previewing the um, men's golf team starts its season in just under a week. I believe the 10th is Monday. At the Marshall Invitational in Huntington, West Virginia. So they're under a new head coach now, right? Yes, Gary Winger left to be an assistant coach at Michigan State, which I believe was his alma mater. Hmm. Cool. I wonder how their Falcons will do this year. They had a good year last year. They uh, won a couple tournaments, I believe. They won at least one. That was with Winger, though. Yes. Okay. But I'm just saying they have a. Right, right, right. They bring back a pretty good team this year. Senior Charlie Olson. Here we go. Oh, I guess Drew Preston did graduate. Okay. Yeah, so. well, he won the Michigan Amateur, which yes. is congratulations to him. That's a huge He's win. One of the better golfers in school history, so um, I'm sure the team will be feeling his loss this year, but some talented golfers return. Also starting this weekend is the BG women's golf team. They do start this weekend, the 8th, at the Redbird Invitational in Norman, Illinois. I don't know what school the Redbird is. Illinois State. There we go. At the Illinois State University. So, um... Both golf golf season is here. Nate's, yes. Nate's a golfer, but he's been golfing for all summer, forever now. <laughs> I love golf. But um, I will not um sure disparage your tran- I will not disparage your transition abilities anymore yes. because I'm sure that is what is on everyone's mind right now. BG down in Gainesville taking on. I believe at at the time they were 23. I don't remember what if they were ranked still now. I don't think they quite fell out of the rankings, but um. They were 23. They were 23 at the time. Yes. And boy, what a game it was. Yes, it was. The Falcons hanging in there all the way until pretty much the end when, I mean, Florida speed and athleticism essentially took over the game. Well, not necessarily took over the game. BG shot itself in the foot quite a bit. Yeah. We'll get to, we'll get to this. Two missed field goals. Two very easy missed field goals. I mean, I can't kick field goals, so they're not. it wouldn't be easy for me. But from a definition perspective of a kicker those are kicks that should be made at least 99 percent of the time yeah inside of what 30 yards they were, i think i do believe they were both inside of th- i do believe they were yeah. both inside of 30 yards um Man. one of them was pretty close to the at the end of the ugh. first half he uh steven stein boinked one off the right up outside of the right upright so it wasn't even one of those cool bar in field goals that I do enjoy seeing it clicked the outside of the right goal post and shot out then he missed another one and that was I believe the third quarter yeah it was later in the game There's, I'm, I'm just gonna throw in my little story it was interesting to watch this game for me mostly because my stepsister goes to Florida <laughs> she was at the game for the first quarter 
and she said she left and like I, I remember texting her i was just like this is when BG was tied. I'm like, so how are you feeling about the game right now? And she's like, we suck. <laughs> so like, yeah. That was... And then... uh, oh, wait. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Don't don't step on my foot. I'm right. sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I like to do that a lot. If you guys listened to the podcast last week, I think I did that five or six times, so I'll just shut up now. Yeah. But uh, then when we were still tied, I think we just got a fumble? Was yes, it? that was towards the end of the third quarter. Yeah. That was, I believe that was, that was right after the second missed field goal. And yeah, then yeah, Florida yeah. got the ball and two plays later fumbled it back. Okay. And uh, I texted my dad. To, so, I mean, he lives down in the Orlando area. So, he's pretty much. My stepsister plays soccer there. So, he goes to all the games and stuff like that. It's got a lot of Florida swag, so to speak. <laughs> and uh, so, pretty much, uh, as we were tied and we got the fumble, I'm like, So, you switched to your BG shirt yet? And uh, he texted me back. And uh, he's like, Oh, no, I. Uh, I'm not home yet. I'll switch when I get there. And then right as I text that, Florida scores another touchdown. <laughs> I was just like, oh, crap, never mind. He's like, oh, time to change again. So. There you go. <laughs> um, the two missed field goals for Stein, going back to that, 29 yards and 31 yards. So both were inside the red zone. And the sort of ironic thing is he was that was his strong suit last year was kicking short. His problem was distance. But this was right in his wheelhouse, and I don't know if it was just jitters or what. But, I mean, neither of them was close. At, well, I mean, the first one was close. The second one he missed pretty badly to the right. Mm-hmm. Yes, because it, mm-hmm. yes, it was on the left hash mark, and he, I don't completely. know what he, just he pushed it completely to yeah. the right. So that will be, I'm sure, one of the things that Dave Clawson gets asked about a lot tomorrow, which is Wednesday. Since we are all, our timeline here is a little confused. You'll probably hear this Friday, but we're shooting it Tuesday, so we don't have the benefit of. Don't his. ruin the illusion. Yes, but we have to ruin the illusion here to explain <laughs> why we don't have any Dave Clawson quotes on the kicker. <laughs> we can't lie to them. So it'll be interesting to see what they do with the kicking game if they stick with Stein or if they go to Tyler Tate. If um, and I believe in the recap that we ran in the BG News. It said that should another field goal attempt have arisen, Tyler Tate was warming up on the sideline to do so, so it sounds as if Clawson was prepared to make the in-game switch Mm -hmm. if necessary. But never seemed to pull the trigger on it. Well, we never had another kicking attempt after that. That's true. But one thing I want to talk about, too, is... um, Wait, let's... uh, Are you going to stay with kicking right now? You, I was planning on moving away from kicking unless you had something else you wanted to add. But we have a question. Oh, yes, that's right. The one question that was asked to us on I our Facebook page this week. Hold on. I'm pulling it up. I want to figure out who asked it. Here we go. You guys have fans? Apparently, we have fans. <laughs> yeah, there's Someone doesn't somebody. understand my saying of in lieu of BG season opening loss. <laughs> I'm educated. I, I like to start, use big words to make myself sound smarter. Or is his accent kind of weird? Yeah, I don't understand what's going on right now. I'm making up accents. The Bowling Green went Bowling south Green. about 50 miles. Yeah. Played down there in the swamp. Okay, anyways, it's Jeremy Baker Jeremy asks, Baker. when will we get a kicker on this team? Excellent I've question. I've been asking that question since I've been here. Uh, <laughs> I hate being that guy who's like, you know, the kicker has one job, and it's – to kick it through the upright. You're not the only one who asks that, though. I know, but I don't like being that guy who's like, you know, what, I'm gonna I'm gonna beat up on the kicker. But really, come on. I think I it is a valid question to ask though, because this was a an area of concern for the Falcons last year. We I don't remember if we talked about it last week or if it was in the original first podcast that we shot that is right. never coming out of your computer. You're just gonna bring that up every episode now, aren't you? Like it's yes. my fault. But it, it does seem like this was a big issue for the team last year because, I mean, while Stein was good kicking from short distance, he d- does didn't have the leg strength to attempt anything. I don't think after the third or fourth game of the year, the Falcons attempted a field goal of greater than 40 yards. Well, did he miss that big field goal against, um, oh, man, was it? No, not Marshall. Um, Are you talking about the extra point? Against Wyoming, was that it? And that was, I believe, that was Kyle Burkhart, oh. and that was the last kick he attempted for the season. Really, I believe. 
if my memory serves me correct. But that, I do remember it was Burkhardt who kicked that. I don't remember if he kicked another, if he had the kicking job I can't after that. I missed that field goal. All but right. Anyways. But um, so it'll be interesting to see if Stein is still the guy who's doing the kicking duties. We don't have that information right now because, as we said, it's this is the day before Dave Clawson's press conference. So I'm sure he'll, when he goes over that on Wednesday, he'll um, he'll be asked that a couple times at least, and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. he'll have a more defined game plan with what they're going to do on that. Um, another thing I want to talk about is drop passes leading to. I was about to ask about that. Uh, uh, leading to momentum so swings the other way. Upsetting. Um. And I don't want to pick just on Sean Joplin here because all every, it seemed like everyone dropped a couple passes. Yeah, but like four? It was it. I believe the uh, they do not have it as an official stat on the athletic page. But my mind count was because at it least, was just that bad. Well, well, I don't think they ever do. But yeah, I mean, but I'm just saying. Yeah, that but might be one. Of I the counted reasons at why. least. He had at least five. He had a couple on one drive. I mean, and one of them was a completely horribly thrown ball. Well, they were bad. That he had to was... go back, but um. It was back to back. It was back to back plays. Yes, where there was dropped. one that was right. That was at the end of the. Both would have that was at, in Well, that that too. was the end of the, of the second half, and then Schultz hit Stokes, and then I believe he hit Ryan Burbank, who, for he had a tremendous game. The walk on his Number first. 17. Yes, his first collegiate action. He had eight catches for I believe sixty yards. He had. Oh, I'm a phenom- stats he had a phenomenal game, but um, that was right before the end of the half when he those two would have given the Falcons a first down, and they ended up converting on fourth down anyway, so it didn't really hurt them there until, I mean, obviously the missed field goal. So, I mean, you can speculate what if he caught either one of those, what would have happened there. But the one that really killed was, as Mike mentioned earlier, the fumble that happened almost immediately after Stein's second missed field goal. Um, I believe it was Omari Hines for Florida. He running the ball, fumbled it. And it, it was, was it, he didn't even get the ball. So it was it, a fumbled it, snap. Yeah, as soon, well, no, it wasn't a fumble. Snap. It, was it was a handoff. It, exchange. As soon as it yes. hit his hands, it just. Yes, they, the muffed exchange between uh, Hines and Jeff Driscoll, and BG fell on it. I believe it was Dwayne Woods who recovered it, and then on the drive, I mean, BG gets. I mean, it was a gift. BG's trailing by three late in the third quarter, and I believe it was the the last play of the third quarter. The pass over the middle bounces right off Joplin's hands, then it's intercepted and taken back 30 yards the other way, which ultimately led to Florida's final touchdown of the game, a 50-yard touchdown pass where... Yeah, that's where the whole momentum of the game shifted. Yes, that was the that was the final death blow for the Falcons. Which was, was that touchdown pass. Which because we were, we were right there the whole time. Which completely surprised me. I thought we were just going to get walked all I over. Thought it, I thought that after Florida's first... Like some team that someone's a fan of in this room. Hey, hey. We're not going to talk about the Michigan Alabama game because <clears throat> I just I was just ranting at Nate all of my on yeah, Saturday was. night yeah. about mm-hmm. Denard Robinson and all that stuff. Um, but after it was, uh, you look so sad. I am so sad. You should be sad. We dropped like eleven rankings. It's terrible. Anyways, but um, I believe it was after uh, it was Florida's second touchdown after um. Mike Gillisley just completely ran all over the BG defense. He it was a thirty yard touchdown run, I think it was. Right, there's well, thirty eight yard touchdown run. Didn't they score two touchdowns after? After what? After the interception. No, that was only one because that was when it was uh well they scored a touchdown the fifty yard touchdown pass where I mean it was just a button hook and then there was a missed tackle and then Frankie Hammond just completely outran the rest of the BG secondary, which I mean SEC speed. We talked about that last week. That's yeah, it's not, gonna but then get, there was it's gonna the, get you. It's gonna bite you in the end. Then there was the 51 yard field goal. Uh, about what well, was the Florida's next drive after the touchdown? They hit the 51 yard field goal to make it a two well a Which, 13 point game. That has to be almost demoralizing to Stein because guy comes out there and hits a 51 sure, yard field then, goal uh, and he can't make well, anything within 30 yards. Well, Caleb Sturgis, he was a finalist for the. Lou Groza award last year for top place kicker. But then at the end of the towards the end of the fourth, attempting a similarly short twenty seven yard field goal, he nailed one off the left upright. I mean, smacked it dead on and then you could hear the uh mm-hmm. the rattling on the T V. <laughs> um But yes, I thought this game was going I thought it was going to be over after the touchdown run with about five minutes left in the second quarter, put Florida up. 
14 to 7 because it looked like at that point Florida was the BG defense was starting to tire and Florida was finally starting to get things figured out but they never Should got have never taken them that long to figure it no, out. No, but they ter- horrible the horrible quarterback play. It the it was the plan for Florida as we highlighted last week was to start one quarterback for the first quarter, use the other for the second quarter and then go after that, but that was kind of muffled a little bit because they started a drive at the end of the first quarter with Jeff Driscoll, who started the game and will be their starter going forward at this point, Mm -hmm. which you can kind of figure out from the game, not because he necessarily played better than Jacoby Brissett, but he was getting more of the snaps. Right. But he was the quarterback at the time, at the end of the first quarter of the series, just started, and and that's when the end of the quarter, so he wasn't going to pull his quarterback mid-series, obviously. Mm Mm-hmm. So I think Brissett and he only ended up throwing five passes in the second quarter because they just ended up giving the ball to Gillisley and he was running all over the place. Right. So, but yes, I'm. The Falcons didn't quit after that. To their credit, the, I was complete. It wasn't their first drive of the game, but um, towards the end of the first quarter, when it looked like Florida thought that BG was just going to come out slinging the ball all over the field and. That drive, at least, John Pettigrew ran all over them. It was one of the most impressive touchdown drives I've ever seen this team put together because it was just ground and pound on the on the ground. Obviously, BG tied the game, and it looked like, I mean, for a time they were going to go ahead. I yeah. I, well, weren't they? Or were they when when they ended up uh, turning it over? Weren't they on like the thirty of BG? Yeah, weren't they on like the thirty yard line of or forty yard line of the, um, the Gators? The interception? Yeah. I th- believe it was inside the red zone. Oh, really? Um, let me Jeez. let me confirm. Let me pull up the uh, play-by-play. That was surprising. I do also, I wanted to bring up, just because while we were watching the game, BG, BGSU started trending on Twitter. So yeah. I took it upon myself during the game. Oh, man. <laughs> I, you should have saved some of those tweets to read, read them out, because it, this, was, this was part of the whole experience was people – who have no idea what Bowling Green is tweeting about Bowling Green. Yeah, it's like a lot of the tweets were like, uh, why isn't why doesn't Bowling Green have green in their color? <laughs> that just did why is it was it burnt orange? Someone said yeah. we were orange and red. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which there's no red in our colors at all. Um, just a lot of who like who the heck is bowling green? What up? I'm just trying. Oh, Wait, I'm trying. I'm my gonna, favorite I'm pull tweet. Up the Samuel Jackson. One. My favorite tweet. I still have it remembered. My favorite tweet was from the great Samuel L. Jackson. What's up with Dem Gators? Bowling Green testing that ass. <laughs> That's a quote, so I'm allowed to say it. Right. Yes. Plus, it's not really that bad of a word. Yeah, anyway. that's right. That. So, <laughs> it's not like when I was five and Samuel L. Said, <laughs> mentioned was, Bowling Green. That was fun. But um, the interception, it was at the beginning of the fourth quarter at the Florida 23. Yeah. So it wasn't quite in the red zone. But, I mean, it was obviously you're within field goal range. Well, significant enough. Supposed field made, goal though. range. I mean, you, so, you, should, you should be getting points in that situation. Um, you want to turn it over to wide receivers? Well, Where we did kind of talk about that. Um, I want to talk about – we just talked about the bad, which, I mean – it's still not all that bad because this is I think this is the perfect not the perfect the perfect thing would have been to win. Right. But I think if you're going to lose, this is the perfect thing that could have happened because you didn't get killed. I don't want to say that BG was the better team because both teams made mistakes in this game mm-hmm. and tried to seemingly give Well Florida's biggest problem was penalties by far. Port, yes, because I mean you can I find out. because you can talk about the interception, the missed field goals, but I mean the bottom line yeah. here is your Florida <laughs> tried to give this game away as well. For us it's impressive to only have 3 penalties for 25 That's, yards. That is for I mean the sign Florida of all this team. to have 14 penalties and 106 yards. Yes. That is which I believe is more yards good. than we had rushing in the game. They had more yards and penalties than we had yards rushing, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Ye- wait, first no, oh, wait. Net yards rushing, 101. Yes. So so for Falcon, I mean, I didn't really hurt it, but I'm, if you're thinking that Moy BG should have won this game, BG game this, gave this game away, absolutely not. Florida did just as much to give this game away yeah. as the Falcons did. But the fact that I thought that BG would have to play a perfect game and Florida would have to screw up as much as they did for the Falcons to make it even a game, but the fact that BG screwed up, right. not just as much, but screwed up a significant amount, and was still in this game. That's huge. Mm-hmm. So, from Dave Clawson's perspective, you have 
I mean, obviously you have a big problem at kicker. Yep. You, uh, I don't think it'll be a big problem at wide receiver. I think that was just a little jitters in a big situation, a hostile environment, and you're obviously playing against a team that physically overmatches you. Yeah, but I think, I think this that'll Ryan, rectify it. This so. Ryan Burbrink is definitely someone that I guarantee you gets more play time. Oh yeah, absolutely. I like too what he did, what, what Clawson did in rotating his receivers out. Which I I don't know if that was I mean just a game plan because he has I'm sure he has a lot of guys he likes. There's a ton of receivers on this roster, and right. I mean with no ex- with no experience coming into this year aside from Sean Joplin, you can I mean mm. afford to do that. I mean if you have a lot of guys you like, you know, all things being equal, you know, just throw them all out there. If it was just because of the heat to keep guys fresh, which either way, I mean it worked out well. Right. The Falcons now have a lot of options at receiver. I personally would like to see more of Jerron Stokes because he looked good in, in a limited action. Yeah, he, he didn't play. He, he didn't it, <laughs> tell it, them about the uh, dreads. <laughs> <laughs> Do we want? I mean, you think? No, man. no. Our oh, our man. roommate, um, he's a fan of dreadlocks, I guess, and he was talking about. I like the guy with the dreads. The pretty much the entire game. It was pretty funny. It was after uh, I believe it was after the fourth down catch when that man crush was born. Yep. But um. Anyways. So there's a lot of options there, and I think that, I mean, once you get into Mac play, you're not facing physically overpowering teams. That'll just rectify itself. But you have a ton of teaching points in terms of, you know, fix these. you have to fix these mistakes, but at the same time you don't feel bad about yourself because you hung with for 60 minutes a team that you was expected to beat you by 29 points. Right. So, I mean, that starts with the good. Um, another thing I want to talk about, I mean, the offensive line, despite the fact that BG only had 100 yards rushing, the offensive line played tremendous. Matt Schultz never – there was a couple times where he had to scramble out of the pocket, but I think that was more due to, to uh, superb coverage downfield than anything else. And, I mean, obviously we touched on it last week. For, Florida has a huge defensive line. Yeah. So all the, things all considered – All the SEC teams do. Yes. Two, two uh, redshirt freshman starters on the offensive line, and they played very well in this game. So that's – looking I mean, forward, that's a huge with... strength to this team. I think the biggest thing to take away from this is if we can, if you can hang with an SEC team, then there's, it should be a fairly good matchup between MAC teams this year. Exactly, um, which is very exciting another, to see the Falcons uh, hopefully win some big games this year. Another uh, player I want to talk about is uh, John Pettigrew. He's been here it seems like forever. I mean, since I've been here, at least he's been here, and he came out that first drive. He was tremendous. He was tremendous throughout the game. Um, Jordan Hopgood was suspended for the game, so he ascended into more of a Featured role, ran the ball eight times for 38 yards and an impressive touchdown run that was aided by, I don't remember who it was, I think it was Chip Robinson, uh, who true. hauled him in on the uh, on his touchdown run. He was stopped at the two-yard line, and Chip Robinson, I don't remember if it was Chip Robinson. It doesn't say. Well, no, obviously, it's not going to say. Oh, uh, well, look, there's a gif of it online somewhere. But I don't know if you can see his number. Is that the Gator thing? No, that, that the same we one? can talk about that in a second, okay. though. Okay. Um, because I know people were excited about that. Some people were excited. Some people were offended. <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. Gator fans but, were um, offended. So John Pettigrew, I mean, 4.8 yards of carry. He had a tremendous game. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Anton Samuel, I mean, it wasn't obviously his best game. 44 yards on 13 carries and a touchdown. And after that touchdown, I'm sure this got some of you fired up doing the Gator Chomp throat slash that cost BG 15 yards on the kickoff, which... Ultimately, it ended up in the uh, the uh, eventual go-ahead field goal. So, I mean, obviously Dave Clawson was not happy about that. I mean, spur of the moment kind of thing. I mean, it was still funny. Yeah, it, was, it was still funny. It was funny. Thus, we're going back to tweets. I saw, saw one person tweet, no matter what happens in this game, September 1st will always be known as the day I saw a Mac player do the Gator Chomp throw slash in the swamp. <laughs> So. I like how a good ten minutes after that happened, it was already an animated GIF. Yes, <laughs> the three, the three, the three animated GIFs from that were the uh, the, the Gator Chomp slash the Gator Chomp, the one he our BG players tackling each oh, other. Oh, that was the set. That was the th- the third one I was going to say. When I I believe it was uh, we couldn't keep up with Jeff Driscoll because he's a fast dude. Mm-hmm. There was Chris Jones was trying to haul him down while he was scrambling, and Dwayne Woods jumped up to try and swat a pass, but ended up getting pump faked, and he fell on top of Chris Jones, and <laughs> they both got taken out. So there was those two, and then the uh, one of whoever the offensive lineman was hauling Pettigrew into the end zone. Oh, yeah. 
so all three of those were online rather quick the beauty of the internet nowadays i'll put the link to that gif in the youtube description so okay. everybody all can th- see it all three of them i'm sure most of you have yeah, seen them already there was a lot of people live tweeting this game yeah the i think the the biggest positive though from this game was the play of the bg defense aside from mike gillisley running for i think it was 150 yards um, yeah, holy crap. Some stats well, I want. okay, when you have 24 carries compared yes, he, to Driscoll's three. Oh, but Driscoll is the quarterback. Well, I, I mean, he was the saw, guy who was running wait, the game. Okay, let's see, Jones. Who's, what, M. Jones? Okay, regardless, the, the next amount of carries was four. Yes, but I mean, six yards a carry. I mean, he had a good game. I mean, obviously you're playing against a veteran offensive line, though, and we go back, we go back to the speed factor. I mean, this is... Until we play Virginia Tech, the last time we'll mention team, uh, elite speed. But I want to go to some st- statistics. These are uh, from John Wagner, the fantastic beat reporter for BG Football for the Toledo Blade, his Falcon Fodder blog on uh, the Toledo Blades, Blades website. I think it's a must-read for all BG Football fans. He uh, did some severe stat analyzing, and we can throw this link in there too. I think everyone should check it out. I, w- I want to highlight this. He has a lot of great information in this piece, but I think this one caught my eye the most, speaking of the Bowling Green defense. The Florida offense ran 63 plays, and of those 63 plays, 11 of those were for 10 yards or more, 17.5%. Um, before those plays were big plays, quote-unquote, 26 yards or more. Um, of those 11 plays... Seven were rushes and four were passes, which I think was pretty much the theme of the game. Florida running well, but not being able to pass well. Right. But on the other side of that, the Gators ran 21 plays, not including incomplete passes, that gained two yards or less. So that was 33% of Florida's plays, not counting incompletions, that were held for two yards or less by the Falcons, which is an incredible stat, Mm -hmm. I think, when you're considering the level of competition you play against, green green quarterback or not. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, Florida had nine plays that went for zero or negative yards, which means one in three for Florida plays gained less than two yards, not including incompletions once again. Hmm. So, I mean, we'll link this in the, even though it's a different publication, I don't really care. This is good stuff in this article from John Wagner of the Toledo Blade, so we'll link that. But I think that's, I mean, obviously speaks tremendously about the Bowling Green defense. Um, another thing I want to touch, and we'll not really touch on, but, um, we mentioned this once again in the, I promise this is the last time I'll bring it up, the first podcast, uh, Phil Steele's College Football Magazine. It's not going to be the last time. It probably won't be the last time. I'm just, oh, the man. last time today, at least, <laughs> because he doesn't really, I didn't read the one. Good, on an hour and ten more minutes till the day's over. <laughs> I never mentioned it again. But um, he rated his top five week one performances for teams. It factors in rush offense, pass, in terms of yards, rushing, passing, points you scored, then yards you gave up, rushing, passing, points, turnover margin, and then your total net yards. And then you got it, I'm sure, I'm assuming he factored in difficulty of opponent face versus the spread, or I don't know what the factor is for that. But um, he had Bowling Green rated as the 17th best performance of the week with a game score of 92.8, which has them sandwiched between Michigan State, who had a 92.9 in their victory against Boise State, and... Nevada, University of Nevada at a 92.7 who smoked Cal. Or I don't know if they smoked Cal. I think they did. I don't know. I'll look up the score later. But um, So, again, that's I mean, just goes to show you how impressive this game was for the Falcons, even though it wasn't a losing effort. Right. Anything else you'd like to add on the Florida game before we move on? No. I think that's all I got. Good game though. It was great it was, game. It was a very good game and um exciting. Like was, I hope it. Uh, this is what I, I. I do hope it carries over. I I know where you're going with this. Right. So. Because there was a lot of people tweeting the game. I mean, you follow the, the parody at BGSU Falcon problems only at BGSU. A lot of people tweeting at those guys. You know, hey football. You know, we have good school spirit. So, it's time to, prove it this weekend. BG opens its season against Idaho, a team that has played. Quite a well, not quite a bit recently, but for a non-conference team, uh, twice the last three or four years, the uh, obviously the big game, the uh, 2009 Humanitarian Bowl. Speaking of exciting games, Idaho scoring with seconds left on the clock and converting a two-point conversion to win. And then last year, 
the Falcons open the season in Idaho against the Vandals, and boy, was it an impressive start to the season for them. That was really Anton Samuel's coming out party. He had a big 52-yard touch. I believe it was a fifth touchdown run. This doesn't have this. I got this from the Idaho website, and uh, it's not. Re oh, here we go. Never mind. He had a big run. He had a uh, a hundred and forty one yards on the ground, his first of two consecutive one hundred yard games to start his BG career, and the Falcons won thirty two to fifteen on a Thursday night game. I remember sitting in the newsroom watching that, waiting for that to uh go finals. That wasn't earlier in the season, was it? That was later. It was the no, that was the first game of the season. Oh. We opened on a Thursday uh, night. Thir oh. That's interesting. In the Kibbe Dome, one of the most interesting oh, stadiums I I've ever what seen in my the life. Kibbe? The Kibbe Dome. It's Kibbe like Dome. it looks like it's played in a warehouse almost. It was really it's Idaho. Maybe the viewers would like to know when and where the game is going. Well, to yes, be we at. can talk about that. The home opener at Dwight Perry Stadium, which everyone should know where that is if you enter town from I seventy five. If you don't know where it is, it is. Well, how, right I don't know. Right next to I seventy five. It's right next to I seventy five <laughs> across the street from Frickers Speedway, BP, the uh, Victory Inn, the Stro Center. Right by the Stro Center. Um, that's the uh, far north end of town. Can I no, say wait, that's not north. That's east. Far east end of town. Yeah. Can I say my little spiel about the tickets? Everybody yes, Nate, Nate has been ranting oh, about this man. for <laughs> for about a week now. Um, Nate, go ahead. Go this. ahead. All right. Just don't call anyone out. Oh, just I'm not say, calling anyone just out. Just say what you have to say. So uh, if anyone listening to this podcast uh, has noticed around campus, there are little signs that say, you know, we're playing Idaho this weekend and tickets cost $15. I'm telling you this now. If you're a student, you get into the game for free. So please come out to the game. With your student ID. With a student ID. If you have your student ID, you get in for free. Come out to the games. It's fun. It's a good time. I yeah. mean, you go down with a group of friends. I mean, you stand in the student section the whole game. I mean, you talk, you do whatever. You cheer for the Falcons, especially. I mean, if you're, you were one of those people tweeting last week, man, we have so much school spirit. Man, our football team's awesome. Back it up this weekend. I just feel like that doesn't help not get people out there on top of having there's a, sh a shuttle service now that goes from various points on campus to the doit which is awesome yes because it's it is a long walk out a... there and the idea that maybe it costs money which it doesn't if you're a student with an id you know it doesn't like go to the games it's fun well, it's a good time it not only does it it doesn't cost money out of your immediate pocket right now but regardless of if you go to this game or not you're still paying Right. essentially for the right to go to the game there's I, I don't remember how much the fee is but in everyone's tuition there's a fee for all athletic events which means that you just bring your student id and you get into the game for free you don't have to pay to get in what are you looking at i was gonna see what it costs out of pocket like oh, the fee yeah just for i'm sure well, we've written it but um anyways I can't this find it right now. saturday night at 7 p.m at the stroh center the uh, home opener against Idaho, who, as I mentioned, the Falcons beat last year. The uh, Vandals did not have a good year last year, 2-10 and ten record. They really struggled under Ouch. Rob Akey, who is one of my favorite coaches of all time just because of the way he he just talks so aggressively. <laughs> In press conferences and stuff? Well, I, I remember the sideline interview from the uh, – from the uh, humanitarian bowl, and he was just like, "I hope everyone's ready for a show the second <laughs> half." <laughs> the, it sounded something like that, but that's kind Very of a caricatured angry. voice. But um, like the Falcons, the Vandals got off to the season on a losing note. However, unlike the Falcons, the Vandals lost to an FCS team in Ouch. Eastern Washington. I don't know what their mascot is. It doesn't say it here, so we're just going to refer to them as Eastern Washington for the rest of this bit. Um, they are is let it golden. It might. I think uh, their. I think their field is actually red. I don't know. Oh, they're one of those teams. I think they like think, Boise. Uh, yes. Eastern. They shouldn't be allowed to do that. I don't well, know. It's, I don't know it's, how you it's guys a, feel about that. It's, it's, a, it's distracting. Oh yeah, it is distracting. It is, a, it is a red field. I can see the picture right there. That's just. They terrible. are. Um. Is that the Eagles? I don't know why they do that. Like what? What? Yes, they are the Eagles. All right. I'm glad I figured that out. The Golden Eagles? Just because they no, can. Just the it's like one of those things just because they can, they well, do it. Well, it, it's not allowed anymore in FBS, but FCS, there's no rules against it. But um, That'd be like making our field orange just because we can do it, right? Dude, I wouldn't go to the games if the field was orange. That would just hurt my head too much. Yeah, and this is, like, this is like well, blood red, Well, it's like looking at, a Bo at Boise's field, yeah. bright blue. Like, yeah. Holy. I couldn't, I couldn't deal with it. But um, this, anyway... 
that's the side tangent here. This was played at, in the Kibbe Dome, the aforementioned Kibbe Dome, so it doesn't really matter what Eastern Washington's field looks like. But um, <laughs> some talent on this Eastern Washington team led by forder, former SMU quarterback Kyle Padrone, who it was a mixed bag with it for him this weekend. He only completed 13 of 33 passes, but he threw for 260 yards thanks to receiver Brandon Kaufman's uh, he had a 58-yard grab and 148 yards receiving on five receptions. So that pass defense might get a bit of a workout if uh, Dave Clawson comes out guns blazing this weekend, which I can see him doing. Yeah. I think – I don't think he's going to – I don't know. Do you think he's going to bring the running game into it or is he going to bring passing? I think passing. I think he'll go passing this week because much like with uh, – this just came to mind immediately because I heard uh, Texas A&M's coach Kevin Sumlin talking about preparing for Florida. He doesn't feel that Florida really used its full bag of tricks against BG, which I can, I believe, to an extent. But I don't feel that. I feel that the BG team that we saw on Saturday, in terms of its offense, is not the team that we're going to see the rest of the season against more level competition. I think that was just a not a special game plan, but a, a separate game plan designed to just. I want to see that same aggressiveness. Though. I, I do like the aggressiveness, especially on that the touchdown drive. It was 10, 12 plays, 89 yards, and about five and a half minutes just running all over mm-hmm. Florida's defense. Especially, I mean, with the depth at running back. As I mentioned, Jordan Hopgood was suspended for the first game. He'll be back this week and reinserted into the depth chart somewhere. I believe he was fourth behind uh, Samuel Pettigrew and uh, Andre Givens. So there's a lot of depth at running back. Um, but at the same time, as we figured out, as we figured out, as we found out, there's also a lot of depth for BG at receiver too. So, I mean, yeah, it just, I mean. Look for number 17 to get a lot of passes, I think. I think he'll have another big game. I think he's going to be the uh, the focal point this year. It seems like BG has one focal point every year. Mm-hmm. 2000 Under Dave Clawson, at least 2009, obviously it was Freddie Barnes, then a 2010 it was Kamar Jordan and only last year was it balanced out a little bit more with uh well this guy's a redshirt freshman so Burbrink yeah yeah so that's exciting yeah so we'll see what uh I'm sure um in the press conference I don't know if he'll give away a game plan I mean because that would just be foolish of him to do to say yeah we're gonna come out and throw the ball but yeah I mean that's I mean I think the great team about the great thing about this football team is this year is that they can beat you with either one mm-hmm. especially now that I mean we've seen what this offensive line can do and it's going to be a strength of this team this year I mean both in pass protection and in making holes for the run game But um going back to uh we'll go back to this Idaho game from last year at a uh, quarterback they don't have Brian Reeder anymore the uh Idaho actually used two quarterbacks this weekend. Uh, Logan Bushnell, who uh, saw a little bit of action against BG last year, late in the game when it was already out of hand. He completed a 51-yard pass, and that was his only attempt. He was 6 of 8 for 41 yards against Eastern Washington. Logan Bushnell was 10 of 24 with an interception, throwing for 123 yards. Oh, I, I make that noise a lot. I need to stop making that noise. I noticed I did that about six times last week. Ooh. Random thought of the uh, of the afternoon or the evening, whatever. The, I guess it's night now. It's late. It's it, late, it Ryan. Is, it is pretty late. Um, but anyway, uh, Idaho's leading receiver last year, Mike Scott, he had 55 catches for 169. Wait, 691 yards. That's what I wanted to say. I got my numbers confused. Killing us. I'm sorry. Wait, mm-hmm. I just he had five ca- or six catches for eighty nine yards against BG last year. However, in the season opener, he only had two catches for fourteen yards. Um, the guy who broke out for Idaho, a junior college transfer by the name of Naji Lovett, small guy, five nine, hundred sixty eight pounds. He had eight catches for one hundred five yards, including a sixty six yard reception. So that's going to be probably uh, the guy they try to go to this week. Most. Um, only 90 yards rushing on 28 carries, 15 carries for uh, 52 yards from Ryan Bass. Um, I mean, didn't score a touchdown against an FCS team, though. It's So, I mean, I 
where was I going with that? Oh yes, that's what that's right. That's what I said to you earlier. I think the most dangerous thing about this game is not who BG's playing because what was that? That was a door. It was a door. It's Brian Peppers. It's probably Max. <laughs> Our editor in chief, Max Philby. Yep, sure. Good call. Do, do, do. <laughs> is um Pizza dangerous song. the dangerous thing about this game is what I mentioned to you earlier is this is well we mentioned this last week with Florida being the the BG game being a trap game for Florida. This is the ultimate trap game for BG this week mm-hmm. because you're coming off of a close emotional loss to a team that I feel they think they could have beaten. I well I know they feel that because Dwayne Woods specifically said after the game we felt that we were go we felt coming into this game that we were going to win, which is what I love about Dwayne Woods. He's so intense and quite frankly scary. <laughs> Also, you guys are at around the forty-five minute mark. Ooh, man, we're going, we're flying this week. Right. Mm-hmm. But um, as I was saying, this is this is the ultimate trap game for BG this week. Um, coming off of, well, I was going off on a different tangent about it. Coming off a game that they feel like they should have won, huh. playing a team this week that they should beat, going into next week, the t- battle of I seventy-five against Toledo. So this team that you should beat, sandwiched between an emotional loss and a game that. I mean, your biggest game of the year, arguably. Which is the third game of the season. Yes. I know you don't like that. No, I don't like it. But um, early line for this game is uh, Bowling Green is a 16.5 point favorite, which I think is about right. Yeah. About two touchdowns. I mean, so that's... What, the, what, what are you looking at? Betting odds. What is the final? Oh, wait. BG opened at a... They opened at 7.5 point favorites. That would be an interesting statistic to try to track. What? How much people won in winnings for voting on BG? Because BG Ooh. won that bet. That's true. BG a, did a cover. 30, it was a thirty-point spread, right? Twenty-nine. Twenty-nine. Twenty-nine and a half, maybe. I don't remember, but yes, BG did cover the spread. So I, I don't know how I would, how we would go. I don't know. If casinos would be like, yeah, we lost this much money on that. <laughs> <laughs> BG opened at a seven and a half point favorite, and as of Tuesday, I believe these come out Monday or Sunday, maybe Monday because of Labor Day, or maybe they can't. No, they, they come probably, out at some point early in the they week. They probably came out on Tuesday because of Labor Day. But today's Tuesday. Okay, then they probably but, came out today. Yeah, but that changed nine points in one It'll day. It'll be Wednesday in an hour. Fun fact. Yeah, with the way we're going, we might uh, finish on Wednesday. Just kidding. We're not going to go that much longer. <laughs> but um, whenever they come out, came out Sunday, Monday, or even today, they have gained nine points in that short amount of time. So, like I said, a team they're expected to beat – I think that's the only th- the only thing in this game I think that can beat BG is themselves. Yeah. In terms of if you have an emotional letdown after that heading into I, the Toledo game, if you're I don't I mean they should be when, fine. When you're at this isn't like Alabama playing, you know, coming off a victory against Arkansas, then playing, you know, southeastern Louisiana. <laughs> oh wow, I completely did that by ah. accident. I was about to say, man, I was just like. Michigan. Well, this wouldn't so, be like Alabama. It's like the, like the Tide coming off the win against no. Michigan. Well, see, I wasn't even using Michigan as an example. I went straight to Arkansas. You would have. But though. you said Alabama, and I just, I just like had this grin in my face. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but this isn't as if it was Alabama coming off of a big rivalry game victory, then playing a non-conference game against Louisiana Lafayette or something like that before they played LSU. This is, I mean, you know, when you're at a Mac school, you can't. I'm, I've heard Dave Clawson say this a numerous amount of times. When you're at a Mac school, you can't afford to overlook anyone, and I don't think they'll be overlooking Idaho per se. Like I'm sure Florida wasn't overlooking BG per se last week, but I think it's something that they have to be careful about this week. I think the only, as I said, I think the only thing that can beat BG this week is themselves. Right. So, um, on that note, well, prediction. Well, do you have something you want to predictions? Add? Yeah. Predictions. Well, no. Let's do predictions, and I'll, I'll tell the kiddies at home what, where they can. Uh, Watch and listen to the game. All right, Nate. Start off. Start off. Prediction. Okay. Good transition. I like that. That was nice. Um, predictions. Let's go. What did I do last week? 21-3. You did 21-3 last week. That was against that team. Okay, let's do... Sixty let's... billion to zero. <laughs> I'll do, I'll do 21-14. 21-14. Ooh, going close. See... While I just said all of that, my spiel about trap games, I think I honestly think BG's going to come into this game angry and agitated and wanting to, I guess, prove to themselves. Take no prisoners. Well, take no prisoners, I guess, if you want to get cliche about it. <laughs> but, I mean, 
prove. Really? You think they're going to come in like all angry about stuff? Well, yeah, because, I mean, if you're coming out with the mentality that if it was like, wow, I'm glad we're just done with that game, but, I mean, clearly they're coming out with the mentality, you know. Like they were close. That we were close, we felt we should have won that game, and we have unfinished business to take care of. I mean, you come out with a fire this week in front of your – the home opener always is a good crowd. Right. So you're coming out in front of what will be probably your best crowd of the year, mm-hmm. aside from the homecoming game. Right. In front of, I mean – I'm sure. I think it's. I think it's less about being angry and more about being excited that they well, played well. You, you know what I mean. Like, yeah, not, but not like, not, not like, like. Oh, I can't believe we didn't win like, against not, Florida. Not now like, we're gonna crush Idaho. Not like anger like. rage, but they'll come out. They'll come up. They'll come up amped to play home opener. It'll be a good. I think it'll be a good crowd. Don't prove me wrong on that, fans. I think come out to the game. I think they'll come out. I think they'll put up some offense. Come it'll out be, in swarms. I think it'll be like the uh, home opener last year, where I mean, granted, they're playing Morgan State, who may or may not be more of a threat than this Idaho team is. I would I, just laugh though if like if they were like just angry. It's just like when the captains come out to the field and they're like, "Yeah, sorry, we're just really pissed right now, so <laughs> we're going to walk all over you." <laughs> sorry, steals the ref's they loudspeaker yeah. and says it. They don't. They don't shake hands at the when the captains meet. They just stare them down. Stare them down. Flip the coin. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm. A, I want to go big. I'm gonna say uh, 45 to 10. Wow, Jesus. Mm-hmm. I. I think. I mean. Any money on this? Huh? Huh? No. Huh? Huh? Good God, I'm not. I, well, actually, yeah, I will take that bet because I'll probably win that. Shut up. Five, ten. Whoa. Man, you're going really big. I am. I mean, that's big. Go big or go home, man. I guess. I mean, you're coming. I mean, you're coming against a team that offensively struggled last week against a lower division team. You're like comparing team. this game to Ohio State versus Miami. It's essentially what it is, though. Really? You're playing against a, a team. I think I don't even know if the WAC is still alive right now, but you're playing against a team from what is. I mean as low as you can lower i mean the whack is as low as you can get right now because it's hanging on the whack by a thread what is the whack? western I... athletic conference okay it doesn't really everyone exist. kind of <laughs> everyone kind of bailed on it and it's kind of just hanging on by a thread and i mean you're playing a team they so were two and ten last uh, year uh, um, Cornish, there's gonna be no whack ah! <laughs> 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 right <laughs> Ryan. We have to end the podcast right there. That was the perfect way to end. Ryan almost did a spit take. I, I had to lean away from my computer because I was afraid that I was going to damage it. <laughs> well, if you would have damaged my mic, I would have been a little more pissed. Well, I was looking at my computer though, not, oh, not the hey, mic. The whack got a uh, they got a new team, the University of Denver. I didn't know Denver had a football. That might be for is that for football or is that just in general because that might be for other sports because they already have a whack championship I don't think Denver has a football team whack championship that's that that's whack that's whack but as I was saying you're playing against a team from a lower conference who was essentially shut down by a lower division team last week Mm -hmm. and you're playing against a BG team who we have established as much improved who played a great game against an a ranked SEC team last week yeah so I mean okay Sound yeah. like you said S E T by the way. S E T S E T S E T I muffled my letters. You're right, just... Denver doesn't have a football team. All right. Sorry, I just had to that, look that up. That's I okay. I was curious. That's okay. I was curious. I'm sorry. We like to uh Oh man, there's a be battleship uh, ad on the side. <laughs> <laughs> a what? Anyways, the battleship. Battleship oh. is in the movie that <sighs> I didn't like. Don't go see An- another it. An- podcast. An- another ta- <laughs> another tangent. We're going off 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 of. I like tangents. Tangents are always fun. I yes, know. they are. They uh, they provide the meat of this podcast and, and humor. The head scratching moments that people are like, what are they talking like about? Why bad? Well, <laughs> this is a sports podcast. We like. We hopefully like to keep you entertained. I'm a film major. He's a film major. Um. So you yes. must have loved battle. So Nate, you had uh, a <laughs> one more thing you wanted to say before we're up here. Oh sure. Uh, let me tell the kitties at home where they can check out the game. It's going to be on BCSN televised, radio, Falcon Sports Network, and on WBGU 88.1 FM. But really, if you're on campus, you should come out to this game. Yeah. It's your f- first football game of the year. I mean, even if it's the last one you go to, I mean, at least until it gets cold. I mean, Show the why? team we care. Seriously, what do you have better to do? I mean, it's 7 o'clock on a Saturday night. Well, yeah, I, I okay, know the answer. Second, okay, yeah. I know the answer to that, but I mean. All you freshmen, you're, you are you shouldn't have any other ideas yeah. at 7 p.m. on a Saturday studying. night. studying. Yeah. Exactly, so you should come, come out to the, the game. game. <laughs> exactly. I mean, your first game of the year. I mean, exactly. Make friends. Yes, Make friends exactly. at the football game. Go down in a pack of tailgate. 20 people. Exactly. Yeah, go tailgate. Go tailgate. Go tailgate. I mean, tailgate food. Don't buy anything at the stadium. Excuse you, Ryan. Thank you. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, go down and I mean, go down with your floor. I mean, I know when I lived in Harshman freshman year, they uh, had a little tailgate out in front of Harshman before that, and then everyone went down. Yeah. Well, they tried to have a tailgate. I don't think it ever matric- oh. ma- See, this year, materialized. See, I think it's going to be better because if they have the tailgate down there and they have one of those shuttles nearby, people will just jump mm-hmm. on them. Well, I think, I mean, even now, I mean, it's going to be nice this weekend. It's supposed to cool down. It'll be nice to walk out to the stadium, walk with a group of friends, have fun. I think next time I'm going to bring some stats on the shuttle thing because I think it's really interesting and I think it's really cool. All right, that'll be the focus yeah. next week, the shuttle. I'm just really curious, too, just to say, Nate has been eating ice cream this entire podcast. It's, it's not ice cream anymore. Say, is that milk now? It's, it's pretty much milk now. All right, well, um. I guess we'll uh, do the obligatory closing. I was a little disappointed that we did not get any suggestions from you fine readers as to what we should name this podcast. Yeah. Yes. I'm not kidding. We're not kidding when we say send suggestions. <laughs> Please. We'll, even if you want to be a troll and send something completely and utterly stupid, as long as there's no profanity and, or anything else otherwise offensive. 4chan, we're talking to you. Yes. If you're a part of the 4chan community, I don't want to hear it. Well, you can send it. I don't care. I'll laugh at it, but we won't read it. Anything that's not offensive or profane. We'll read on the air, and then we'll have a vote. I'm or... going to have to start titling it on YouTube, the, the BG News Lemonade yes. Podcast. Right, don't, I don't want to do don't that. Let us, don't let us settle People on People will lemonade. be so confused. They'll see <laughs> sports pictures and Lemonade Podcasts. It see, doesn't make any sense. They'll just see Lemonade Podcasts, and then they'll click on it out of sheer curiosity. Maybe we can be like, sponsor wait, they're talking... <laughs> and they're talking about sports. What is going on? I but, thought this was about lemonades. But, um, yes, you can tweet podcast name ideas or bg sports related questions or professional sports related questions i don't care i'll answer those too we can answer those i don't care well there's no i'll plug my twitter again we'll do yes you can send them to us on twitter all right i'm at nasty nate 501 and i am at ryan underscore satkoviak you'll be able to see that how that is spelled in the information of this youtube video and once again, I'm not giving my Twitter handle. Mike, this is going to be a fuddy-duddy. Or you can tweet at us at BG News Sports or at Fuddy the BG Daddy. News. Maybe I can pull some strings and uh, if somebody suggests a good podcast name, we can get them a little something-something. Wait. A... Do you, you want to rephrase prize. that? <laughs> a prize. A prize. Prizes. Right. We have prizes. We'll, 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 uh, I, I love prizes. prizes. We'll, get, we'll get a... You get a BG News t-shirt or something. Actually, that's I don't know if anyone wants a BG News t-shirt. We'll get you something you can okay. actually use. I would like a BG News t-shirt. Yeah. Would you? Okay, I got one Ryan, you can have. Don't act like you don't want free stuff. People that's out there true. want free People stuff. People love want free stuff. stuff. Dude, I'm just trying to sell stuff right now. We'll you get, you, we'll get you a free flying disc. Oh, joy. Oh, yes. Sweet. But, um, yes, podcast name ideas, questions, or if you just want to you know, yell at us or something, I don't know, tweet at us. And until next time, I am Ryan Sokoviak. I am Nathan Alconnage. And I am Mike Nowak. Thanks again for tuning in, and we will see you next week.